Hello, everyone. My name is Paula Ferris, and you're watching The Libby O Show. How did she do it? Do it. Do it. Do it. Libby. Oh, oh. Libby. Oh, oh. Libby. Three. Oh, oh. Two. Libby. One. It's a Libby O show. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of The Libio Show. I am very excited uh, to have Emmy award-winning host and reporter on the show today. Uh, she was a co-host on Good Morning America and also on The View, and she has this incredible book that I finished mm -hmm. in a day. Uh, you don't <laughs> have to carry it all. Um, also, founder of Carry Media, Paula Ferris. Welcome to The Libio Show. How are you? Oh, Libby, it's so great to, to meet you, and I can't believe you read the book in a day. That's faster than I've ever read my own <laughs> book, so it's well, impressive. Well, it was just, it was so interesting. And obviously there's a lot of research that mm -hmm. went into, into you don't have to carry it all. So first I want to ask, um, mm -hmm. how was this book encouraging to you? Obviously you're writing it, yep. you know, to other women. And of course those that aren't even married, but they see, you know, children mm -hmm. being a part of their, their working future. So can you share right. more how this book has been very encouraging to your journey? Yeah, for sure. Well, I, I wrote the book. I founded Carrie Media and Carrie Me. The genesis of Carrie is like we. I want to help carry women, carry mothers through these touch points in their life. But um, I this is the book I say that I wish someone had written for me on my journey to becoming a mother and a mother in the workplace. And I think so many of the issues we face as a society all I'm talking all issues are in direct result to how we treat mothers in the workplace and how we value or don't value families in this country. So I wanted to just I, I wanted to figure out like, how can we give working mothers the support they need and deserve but in order to do that, like, how do we get to this point where becoming a parent is a stress and a strain where you have young single women saying I don't want to have kids because it's going to negatively impact my career. I mean, that's not anecdotal. That is true. It, it does. Um, and so I, I just wanted to kind of, I, I wanted to wear two hats, my journalist hat and my mom yeah. hat and figure and answer all of these questions. And so I interviewed, this, you know, some of the more renowned thought leaders. I interviewed people from both sides of the aisle. I interviewed people from different faiths, um, mothers from all walks of life. And um, it was just really fascinating. I, I think in order to figure out how you're going to tackle something, you have to peel back the layers. So like, how did we get to this point? How did we, why did, why is parenthood a stress and a strain in this country? And it's not it's not to that extent in other countries, right? Why is why are record levels of burnout for mothers and women happening here in the, in America, as opposed to other countries, right? So um, I, I want the book to be yes, it's a little painful at some times because we're we're talking about our country's history and how we got to this point. You got to rip off the band aid, but I want it to be helpful and hopeful. And I want you know it's it's you, you don't have to carry it all, ditch the mom guilt, and find a better way forward. I really. I really want people to, I want the takeaway to be that, look, it's not great, but it's, there's, there's hope and we are going to find a better way forward for our country and for the mothers in this country and hopeful mothers. And we need everybody in the fight. We need women without children. We need men alongside of us. It can't just be mothers locking arms with mothers. We need to bring everybody into this conversation because at the end of the day, how we treat fa families and how we value families is like the true health of a nation. Absolutely. And I will say um, when you're speaking to involving other members in the family or just your community in general, that was one of my biggest takeaways um, of, of empowering other people in your life to do oh, their you. role that they were made to do. Um, and so can you just talk even a little bit more about that, how that reinforces the title of not having to carry it all yourself and really totally. giving everyone, you know, just mm -hmm. making them feel a part of the change? Yes, exactly. And that's, I think, if we if we don't invite men, if we don't invite single women, single men into the conversation, we're not going to solve this issue. And I think that's imperative. One of the chapters is how to invite men into the conversation, because you have to realize they're already coming into the conversation feeling less than <laughs> and feeling a little intimidated and feeling like they're the worst human being on the planet. But in order to create true systemic change, we need it needs to be a collaborative effort. And also you look at 
at other countries, Libby, and um, what was really fascinating, um, you know, I talked to historians and sociologists um, in the book, I really kind of nerded out at some points, but, um, you know, raising a family and raising children in other countries, it's like a communal community interdependence effort, even if you don't have children, you have a, a vested interest in making sure that that child, it be, they are our greatest natural resource, they are a, they are a a valued commodity, whereas here in America, it's, they're a valueless commodity, right? We don't care. Your kid, your problem. And it's just really a beautiful show of how, like, when you can ask for help in other countries, they're not only are our, our mothers and women, most of the time they don't have a choice, but to work, they create, they take a great amount of pride, but they have such great support from their society. The attitude isn't your kid, your problem. It's I am my brother's keeper. And that's even if it's not your child, because they believe in the future of the country. And even if you don't have children, the future of the country is children and investing in them. And so it's a beautiful communal effort like they're not trying to carry it all they're not trying to put everything on their back they're asking for help they're working together it's beautiful inter interdependence and they get a lot of um, help from from society and from the policy makers too for sure and there was one part that i remembered you know specifically when you're talking about french culture and how you mm -hmm. know they're they're kind of teaching their children how to cope with frustration and challenges yes. obviously not by themselves or alone in any in any capacity mm -hmm. but just giving them that responsibility and accountability totally. and confidence and um so i mean can you talk a little bit more about that and about like how you've raised your children to maybe kind of echo that that same yeah it's like you know children here in america there there is definitely a sense of entitlement we want to give our kids yeah. everything there there's a term called hot house children about how we <laughs> raise our children here in america but yeah. but getting back to like the french they don't have pr pretty much they don't have kids menus like kids can sit at the table and they are on good behavior they believe that like not allowing your kid to work through their frustration and work through no, the saying no to them that that's doing them a disservice they need to learn how to cope with no they need to learn that word and they need to know how to reconcile it and work through it and here like it's like we want to do everything for our children but at some point we're cutting them off at the knees by not allowing them to fail by not saying no and sticking to it right by being firm you know like i write about a reset like a good reset in your home is like who's the boss of this home I, and the kid says, you are, and who's the employee, who's the employer, you know, and who's the employee, it's the kid is the employee, and it's constantly resetting that, like, we have to say no, we have to learn how to say no, and stick with it, and learn that it, allowing our kids to be frustrated, and allowing them to, to reconcile no, and deal with, like, the bumps and lumps of life, it's actually good for them, they need to figure that out. Exactly. And then I feel like that also kind of translates into creating boundaries um, in their own lives later on. I mean, you talk 100%. a lot about the working environment and making sure that we develop, um, redevelop a society where there's more affordable childcare and yes. health benefits and time off. And mm -hmm. even, I mean, even giving a list towards the end of how to ask for a raise, like knowing mm -hmm. when it's time mm -hmm. or like knowing how to compromise, you know, if, if you can't get a raise in the actual salary, you know, can you get flexible time off or that sort of sure, thing? Sure, knowing so, what to ask for. It yeah. might not just be monetary, it might be more quality of life, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that yeah. was very, very interesting. Um, and I know we talked a little bit before, you know, diving into this interview about single women who are reading this, like myself, mm -hmm. um, yep. who, you know, see themselves having kids down the line. How do you feel like this equips someone like me um, for a future role as a working mom? Yeah, and I mean, the, it's it's a very real fear for so many young single women that like in the majority 90 percent of of single women are worried about how having children will affect their career one day and the reality is it does and so i wanted to point out those realities i'm not sugarcoating anything you know once you become a mother you you are paid less than women without children um you're passed over on promotions that's the reality like does that sound entertaining to you libby <laughs> probably not no. you know women <laughs> Um, mothers make 70% of what fathers make. Mothers of color make even less than that. We don't get, we are, we are valued less. Uh, we are paid less. We are scrutinized more. And so like th that's the reality, but how I want to encourage um, 
women that want to have children, I want them to know that becoming a mother is actually a game changer and it actually equips you with all of these skills that you didn't have before we're not out counting cheerios in the corner that's not that's the perception right but the reality is when you have children um yeah it can be a shit show right <laughs> but you're growing in empathy and you're growing in you're growing in empathy you're growing in efficiency you're growing in courage you're growing in emotional intelligence and that's a lot of that is just becoming a parent not just a mother so whether the kid grew in your your heart or your tummy right um but parenthood motherhood equips you with so many key skills that that you're becoming a viable leader and yet when you become a mother you're you you're not deemed a leader anymore so um it's just equipping you with the actual research and data to show that if I choose to become a mother, like I don't need to be penalized. I can actually become more efficient, but I also don't have to, I also don't have to um, accept the archaic work standards and I know how to advocate for myself now. So I'm hoping that I, that it helps you know your worth right? If you do choose to become a mother, um, how to advocate for it. And the, the next important thing is to pull somebody else, pull another young woman alongside of you and just say, look, I'm fighting for you. And that's what like, I'm fighting carry media, we want to help carry these burdens. And we want to change the game for working moms. And we want to change the game for for women who want to become children. And we can't do it alone. Like I need you in the fight with us, Libby, to say, you know what, Paula, those are your kids, but I'm invested in them too, because I know that kids are our future. And if a company institutes great policies that are family friendly, it's probably going to help me too in the long run. You know, those policies are also going to be great for the young single woman or the young single guy. And at the end of the day, like if you make it more difficult, um, even if you never choose to have children, and that's totally fine. I don't think that you have to have children to be valued as a woman. Okay. And I make that clear in the book, but like how we value and support families, if we make it more difficult to have children, then um, we will have fewer children. When we have fewer children, we don't have as many laborers. When we don't have a labor force, then we have economic crisis and that impacts all of us. So it's not just good for companies and, and for society to, 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 it's not just the moral thing to do. It's like good for our bottom line. It's good for our economy to value families. So that's why I encourage, I want you to know your worth, advocate for it. And, and then like really, really um, encourage you to bring other people along, other young women alongside of you. But even if you don't choose to have children and that's that, that, look, that's amazing. We need everybody in this. We need you in this fight. We need you to lock arms with us and say, I'm gonna fight for your children too, because it's for the betterment of our country. And it's it's good for all of us to act. It is, it's the so, brother's keeper mentality that you yes, were speaking it really about is. earlier. Uh -huh. it's, yeah. I am my brother's keeper, exactly. <laughs> or my sister's keeper. We could be, you could there be There we go, sister. aunt's keeper. I'm an aunt. Whatever, <laughs> whatever, that's great. And so, you know, that's what's wonderful too, is like the, building asking for help it's something that yes. we don't do here in america i point out in the book i had i interview a friend and she has four kids and she would she had a lot of um uh children from other companies <laughs> she had a lot of um what is it foreign exchange students <laughs> I couldn't yeah. think of it. I'm like, what am I thinking of? Kids are going to okay. get their own companies now. I love yes, it. Yes, they're getting their own companies. So I interview um, a mom of four from Chicago in the book, uh -huh. and she had she had um, foreign exchange students. Why can't I remember this, Libby? <laughs> what is my problem? She had foreign exchange students living with her, and their perception yeah. was always American mothers are working harder than mothers mm -hmm. anywhere else in the world. And it's because there's this perception that once you become a mother, you have to carry it all. You can't ask for help because it's a sign of weakness uh, or you're a failure. And that's just not true. We need to do life together. We need to ask for help. We need to know that we can drop balls every now and then keep the glass ones in the air, drop the plastic ones. But asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's actually like a sign of strength. We can't do this alone. And we also have to have realistic expectations and we need more support from society. We need more support from culture. We need support from our communities. We need support from our policymakers. We need support from, from women like you, Libby. And I know that you're what that's, that's exciting to me that um, you want to help roll your sleeves up and exactly. I will fight for you too. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. And everyone <laughs> listening to this, because I, 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 I will was... mess someone up for you. Libby. <laughs> I will mess somebody up for you. <laughs> Cheers to that. Honestly. <laughs> mess it. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like, I, the thing too about this book is, you know, I think 
that having that history lesson too of Mm -hmm. you walking through those different eras that again like the positive is it hasn't always been this way i mean even back as far as the medieval era of women being working in breweries and you know then you get to the industrial revolution and you you know walk through how that really changed the dynamic of things and how we can turn that around again we have time so that to me was very very interesting but you can't change history if you don't really know it and like i have fallen victim to romanticizing that traditional family of the 50s let's get back to that but like that history lesson was important for me because I realized, well, what was good for part of the people, part of the time in the fifties was often predicated on the backs of marginalized people. Well, it was good for part of the people because blacks and women couldn't work. And we had a teenage baby boom and a third of the country was in poverty. And, you know, when we think it was a more moral time, well, it actually wasn't because you've seen mad men, men were coming home with lipstick on their collars all the time, but women, couldn't get a job. And if they got a job, they were paid less. So they were kind of forced to stay in these marriages. Rape was legal in marriages. So like, I don't want to go back to that time, but I didn't, (laughs) but I didn't know why I didn't want to go back to that time until I like peeled back some of those layers and realized that traditional family is actually the most non-traditional family we've ever had. The most traditional family we've ever had in America is the one where men and women are working alongside of one another. They're working together, toiling together, raising the children together, providing together working together as a cohesive unit. That's the exactly. way. Yes, 100%. And of course, like these days, we're dealing with a lot, um, a lot more in our world, technology, you know, a, a, yep. a slew of things that people in the 50s and 60s did not have to know. Totally. So it's 100%. And one other thing, like for women like you, you know, even, you know, I mentioned some of the studies, the Harvard Business Review, where like, there's still this mentality that, if there's a man and a woman, well, like a, a, a woman like you, you're not going to get the same amount of opportunities. You might not get the same amount of money out of the gate, but there's still this perception of if someone's going to stay home with the kids, it's going to be the woman. And the reason that that is, is because she's going to be paid less anyways, right? But you see how that cycle of poverty will continue because the majority of moms are working these days because they have to. And the majority of mothers, 70% are going to be their kids' primary bread bread breadwinner at some point. So like if we continue to pay women less than they're worth, we're going to continue this cycle of poverty. And that's what I want to help change for for you, Libby. I mean, you're a single woman. Um, You shouldn't be passed over on opportunities. You shouldn't be offered less than out of the gate just because you're a woman. When in fact, most the the most college degrees are coming from women these days, not men. So it's, it's a lot about changing perceptions in our country, too not at the expense of men it's just like we're making a case for i'm making a case for working moms and it's not it's not making a case against anyone else so it involves everybody it does it really does Mm -hmm. um i want to briefly uh you know to close things out talk about what you're doing currently besides this book you've got the Mm -hmm. carry fund that you're working on yes your podcast so share a little bit about those things yeah so i've been doing a podcast um for about two years and um hoping to start doing a little bit more video, but really my efforts are are really consumed with carry media. Um, we have a weekly newsletter, which is the weekly newsletter for and by working moms. It's a free resource every week we offer and carry, you know, we offer resources and content and we want to tell the stories to change the stories. So um, there's a lot of great resources. Like you mentioned, we, you know, we have resources on how to ask for a raise, um, how to fight burnout, um, how to de-stress dinner, how to, how to have a, a good summer, how to have conversations, hard conversations with your kids, how to invite other people into the, you know, into the fight with you. So like really Really great resources. Um, and you mentioned the carry fund. Um, we're hoping to get that off the ground and, and really going in 2023 because this is a reality for women and for mothers. But one of the reasons I think um, women, like we need a voice at the table, we need to be at the decision making table, but yet we we don't have a seat there and i think one of the reasons is because we get two to three percent of the vc dollars and vc means venture capital so like entrepreneurs founders business women we're getting two to three percent two to three percent okay so no wonder we're not at the table um and so i want to change that but if you think if look at that number it's even less for moms it's even less for mothers of color so i want to do a fund that is just for mompreneurs and what's interesting the data shows that that um 
mothers, mother, mompreneurs was actually one of the largest growing sectors the last couple of years, yet we're doing it without any funding. So um, I really want to help push back against that reality and provide a space that can help mentor and fund mompreneurs. So we're hoping to launch that and get it really going. It'll be a nonprofit uh, arm and philanthropic arm of Carrie. So, cause I believe in giving back, so. Well, this is so phenomenal and amazing. And I'm, you know, obviously honored to, to be able to interview you and to feature you, Libby. the book. And it comes out March 7th of this it does. year. The Available day before everywhere. International Women's Day. <laughs> oh, did and you, did it's you plan History that? Women's History Month, maybe. <laughs> and it's Women's History Month in March. I love so, it. Yes. Yeah, I'm well, excited. I'm very, yep. very excited to, to be a part. And um, people can follow you, you on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere, the podcast. Thank you. Um, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Libby. God bless you. And remember, I'll fight for you, girl. Okay? You too. <laughs> <laughs>